Echo has concerns. Meow. What are you meowing about? Tastes like salty flour. Come on! <laughs> that was my finger. <laughs> oh no. It's the show where we cook food and make drinks from your favorite book series. I am not your host, and this is not your normal kitchen, and this is not your normal video, but I'm gonna be cooking food from what is hopefully one of your favorite books. You probably will recognize it. I'm sure you've seen it around the channel a couple times, and that is Alethea. So this video is going live on the 7th of September, and for those of you who don't know, the 7th of September is the anniversary of Alethea's release. It's been a whole year. Crazy, I know. And so in honor of Alethea's anniversary, this month is gonna be all about dystopian books. So all of the videos on this channel, all of the pictures on my bookstagram, it's all gonna be dystopian themed. I'm taking over for today and I'm gonna be making the food and Josh is gonna be judging it. You might be wondering what we're gonna be making. There's not a ton of food in Alethea. In fact, the main character has only one food she eats on a regular basis, so of course that's what we're gonna be making, and that is the ration blocks that she eats every single day. Now, I'm not gonna make an exact version of those because they don't taste good. Instead, I'm gonna make that into a cake. So I guess I'm supposed to give a description of the book. Alethea is a new adult dystopian book set in the nearish future. Alethea centers around our main character, 736 who is essentially a prisoner. She's forced to work and do the bidding of the city of Iris. And this all takes place in a world that's been ravished by a disease called Leth. I call it Leth, it's technically pronounced Lethe. Leth sounds less weird. <laughs> it's a Greek word. Don't blame me for how weird it is. So the world has been ravaged by this disease and what this does is it unravels memories and it does this by interrupting the reconsolidation of memories. So whenever you remember something, it doesn't get restored in your memory like normal. So the things most important to you are the things you forget first. It kind of drives people crazy until they fall into a feral like steak because they can't remember how to do anything. So our heroine, 736, is locked away in this compound and she decides she doesn't want to be locked in this compound anymore. So she tries to break out with her friends with some help of another outside force. So in Alethea, in this compound, everything's pretty much automated. So the food that they eat on a regular basis is a nutrition block, which is not made to be unappetizing, but it's just like, it's kind of jumbled nutrients and all of the different things they need. So it doesn't taste great. And so I'm gonna read you guys the description. She's toying with a ration square, breaking it apart and forming it into smaller shapes, which she's stacking into haphazard structures. Though mostly green, the ration block is speckled with chunks of gritty orange substance, hard black specks, and slimy white spots that contain the only real moisture in the entire block. So obviously when I created those nutrition ration blocks, I wasn't thinking about how to make them appetizing for Savory Stories video. We didn't have Savory Stories at the time. So then I had the fun task of trying to take that description and turn it into something appetizing. So this is a completely unique invented recipe. I'm not sure how well these flavors are gonna work together. I'm gonna make Josh try it first. And if it tastes terribly nasty, then I don't have to try it. So let's get started. Oh, there's cat hair in this bowl. Echo, why did you do this? Where are you guys? Why are you being lazy? They're slacking. They're not in the background for me. They're in the background of all of Josh's videos, but no, I do a video and they're not in the background doing cute cat things. That's sad. All right, so three fourths cup butter and I believe one stick is one half cup. I hope so. I'm not gonna actually double check because I don't do that. Now we need half of this half because that makes three fourths if you know how to math. All right. Get in the background of my video, what are you doing? Lazy, come earn your keep. There's that. I'm partially using this knife for thematic reasons, but honestly, I don't actually have our set of knives here. Is that the old apartment? Right, I guess I didn't even tell you guys why the kitchen is different. We moved apartments, so we still have a lot of stuff in boxes. Everything's still all over the place. There you are, Kashi. Go be a background cat, please. So I'm actually using this knife partly because this is a prop knife, which came over on one of the initial loads of stuff. And our actual knives are still not here. <laughs> you trying to eat my butter? They can't even see you. Terrible at this, Kajit. Gonna fire you. Kajit, don't eat my butter. So to this butter mixture, we're gonna add one and one third cup sugar. I'm gonna try to not 
spill it everywhere. We'll see how. That didn't go very well. Okay, you don't like sugar, you don't get sugar. Cats can't taste sweet. Why do you want sugar? Is that an actual fact? I read that somewhere that cats can't taste sweet, but Khajiit seems to like things that are only sugar. Well, hello there, Echo. You're also not in shot. Thank you. That's my butter. That's not your butter. Go away. This <laughs> you know is not your butter. <laughs> So I get to now try to cream this butter into this sugar. And I didn't warm up the butter at all because I wasn't thinking about that at the time. So now it's gonna be hard to cream this together because it's all hard and cold and there's cat hair in it. Thank you, Khajiit. This is fun. Khajiit, don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at my suffering. Ah, <laughs> no, no, it's my butter, go away. <laughs> You don't get it. The internet said you can't taste sugar. Why are you trying to eat sugar? When I was a little kid, there was a brief period of time where I dropped off the growth charts. Like I was gonna actually need like growth hormone shots. My mom's solution was to try fattening me up to see if that made me grow. So I spent a good couple years there being basically spoon fed pure butter. And sometimes to make that butter more interesting, I would mix it with sugar. I know that probably sounds disgusting to you guys. Josh thinks it's disgusting, but like, this actually smells quite appetizing. I'm gonna still continue on to make it a cake because, you know, don't worry, I don't eat plain butter and sugar anymore. Now I add flour to that mixture and cook it first because, you know, that's way more healthy. You guys are so intrigued. No, you don't get to eat this. Gotta get in the background. What are you doing? Echo thinks it looks creamy. Excuse you. So now we get to ruin our delicious butter and sugar mixture by adding eggs to it. So you gotta make sure to sniff them to make sure they're still good. And I guess we're gonna cream these into this. Yeah, this no longer looks appetizing. <laughs> Excuse you, out of the window. Go be cute. All right, so now it's time for the dry ingredients. There's sugar granules everywhere. We want a cup and a half of flour. Every time Josh opens it, it spills everywhere. I bet I can do it better. Ah! <laughs> this is harder than it looks. I believe in you. That kind of worked. Now we need one teaspoon baking powder. Now because we use unsalted butter, so we're gonna add a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna mix that together. And now we get to the interesting part where we start making this cake match up with the description of those ration blocks. You think that since I wrote it, I would remember, but you know, there's a lot of words in this book. Mostly green, the ration block is speckled with chunks of gritty orange substance, hard black specks, and slimy white spots that contain the only real moisture in the entire block. See, I remember parts of it. I could cheat and use green food coloring, but I'm not the cheating type. So we're gonna use this stuff that is possibly gonna make this taste not great, but it's accurate. It's a natural way to make this cake green. So that is matcha green tea powder. I'm showing the wrong camera. I don't know how this works. The camera display is upside down. I don't know what direction's up. And this is basically just a powder version of green tea. Yeah, I have never tried a green tea flavored stuff besides obviously green tea. If I can get it open, it smells like green tea. So there's the inside of that. It's just green powder. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of this. What does the flour taste like? Tastes like salty flour with baking soda. So now hard black specks, poppy seeds. And we are putting in a whole half of a cup, which means this whole thingy. So death by poppy seeds. <laughs> Echo on the head. I was aiming for his head. Shh, I got skills. So I just take a whole thing of poppy seeds and just dump the whole thing in there. They taste like seeds. I guess we're gonna mix our wet ingredients into this powdery stuff. Khajiit is mesmerized by my goop. Yeah, you like my goop. Ah, I forgot I had raw eggs in it. I'm gonna die. Khajiit, why did you let me do that? So mix this stuff in. Can you see that? Is Khajiit blocking the camera? Cute. Excuse you. I guess you can lick that. Okay, so it's not looking so bad. Tastes interesting. So next, we have our gritty orange substance. We got our oranges here. And we are going to get the zest of two of these oranges. So there's our first bit of orange zest. So just plop that right in there. It's all mushy. And there's our second orange worth of zest. And now we're gonna be using a fourth cup of orange juice. I only have a lime lemon juicer, so I'm gonna try to cut this orange down to lemon size and see if the lemon juicer works. They're basically the same fruits. Now don't do like I always did and put this upside down, but you put it in like that. Does that get some more juice out? I guess, apparently, I don't know. I don't do this a lot. 
Because I just bloat everywhere. Oh God, <laughs> it almost worked. Ah, look at that, it's delicious. Squirting myself in the eye. <laughs> Oranges are dangerous. Oh my God, there's so much rind. <laughs> it's exploding everywhere. Ah, this is not working well. So let's put our fourth cup of orange juice in there. Well, this is quite a lovely mess. That's later Macon's problem. Try to mix this in. Still tastes pretty good. I think I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of the matcha powder to get a little more on the green side. Now, last but not least, slimy wet spots. We're gonna use marshmallows. Tastes like marshmallows? I would hope so. And we are going to put in a cup of marshmallows and some extra that fall in because we're clumsy. Okay, a lot that fall in because we're clumsy. Now I'm pretty sure in the compound ration blocks, the slimy white spots were not marshmallows. I say I'm pretty sure as if I didn't write the book and think about this. So this mixture does not look very delicious, but we got all our components now. So far it tastes pretty good. So now you need a ration block size pan. Spray it down with oil, of course, because we don't want our ration blocks to stick. Oh yeah, you're supposed to preheat your oven. I didn't do that. We're gonna bake that at 350 because we want it to take a billion years. So while that is preheating, we can plop that down in there. This really tastes surprisingly good. I didn't expect this to taste as good as it does. These ration squares are baked with love. I'm pretty sure they didn't come with love in the compound. <laughs> pretty sure they came straight from a machine. I, I'm doing it again. I'm saying pretty sure as if I don't know. This looks like a health food smoothie. It does not look like cake batter. <laughs> so I don't know how this is gonna cook. I don't know if it's gonna even out on its own. So I'm gonna poke at it like a weirdo instead. Hmm, that's the best part of cooking is you get to lick the bowl. Why else would anyone ever volunteer to cook? Now that you've put that in the oven, we're gonna make a glaze. Obviously in the compound, the nameless didn't get fancy glazes, but we're gonna make a glaze pretty standard, but I'll walk you guys through it because I like you. So we're gonna do a cup of powdered sugar. And to make it interesting, we're gonna be doing an orange zest glaze. So let's bring this back over here. Pretty sure Josh keeps this area cleaner, but this isn't Josh. So you guys just have to deal with this. And we still have one orange left that we can zest. Ouch! That was my finger. Oh no. Now there's finger zest in there too. So there we go, an orange worth of zest. And now we're gonna use the juice of orange to liquefy this glaze. I always make fun of Josh for making a mess, but I'm pretty sure his videos aren't usually this bad. <laughs> it just squirted all over me. Oh my God. I'm gonna smell like oranges for weeks. I shower, I swear. I don't know why I said that, but like this juice is going everywhere. <laughs> Do you like orange? Smell the orange. How pleasant. Thank you for joining us, Echo, as you leave. Thank you, okay. And there we are, super simple orange that's glazed. Tastes like orange. And that's done. I don't know, we just gotta wait for our cake and drink our fresh orange juice. Oh, that is not as sweet as I was expecting. Ah! All right, here we are. They are done. So, let's just plate it on a tray, because in Aletheia and the compound, they ate on plastic trays. I think they look pretty good. They came out very much like a ration block square. So now you guys know comes the taste testing. Taste tester. Man, feeding me some weird ass looking shit here. <laughs> they're full of vitamins, like vitamin C. Yeah, I like how they're green. They do fit the description pretty well. Good. I see the little, those little specks inside of it. The There's a nice specks. cat hair right here. <laughs> <laughs> Extra fiber. <laughs> but is it tasty? I don't know. Now we do have our orange glaze. I'm not sure if these are gonna be too sweet on their own, so we're gonna glaze up one of them and we're gonna try them both and see what's better. Man, you made a glaze all fancy with little specks of orange inside of it. Yeah. All right, so I guess we should do the cross section. Probably. So we can see how green they are. Would you like to do the honors? I guess so. Boop, boop, boop. I don't see any marshmallows. Where did the marshmallows go? <laughs> there are no marshmallows. Where did the marshmallows go? Did you just not cut through a marshmallow area? I don't know. Huh? Get. Get. <laughs> Come on. No. Still no marshmallows. <laughs> well. I have a feeling that they all melted. <laughs> well, let's try it and see if it's tasty. Mm. Mm. It's really good. 
Ooh. That were really good. Oh, that is really good. It's really dense. Like way better than I expected, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? For a custom good. recipe, this is pretty amazing. Yes. Success. Mm. I uh, like how the edges are really crispy and the inside yeah. is nice and soft and dense. And you, I like that you can actually see the gritty orange pieces. That part worked well. And <laughs> it is pretty green. Mm. Honestly, I like it better without the glaze. Oh. The glaze is really good. Don't get me you wrong. You like less sweet though. But I like less sweet and it makes the orange a little bit too overpowering. Whereas I think the cake by itself is pretty much perfect. <laughs> It's kind of like a coffee cake, so it doesn't mm. really need a frosting or a glaze. Wow, I'm so happy. I was really worried about the green tea mixed with coffee, mixed yeah. with marshmallow, mixed with orange. That's yeah, a lot of Yeah, I haven't flavor. really had much matcha flavored stuff yeah. before, but like this tastes really good. It's got like an earthy flavor kind of. Mm -hmm. It pairs very, very well with the orange. Oh yeah, like the texture in this is literally perfect. <laughs> I don't know if you could have done any better than this. <laughs> yes. So besides the marshmallows, it worked perfectly. Mm -hmm. I think you can call this one a success. Yes. Beginner's luck. Or it's just because I'm brilliant. Man, maybe I should have you take over this channel. <laughs> no, no, only if you take over the author team. Deal. All right, well, that was ration blocks from, a, I don't know why I'm holding the knife and threatening Jeez, you guys. Jeez, that's threatening them. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, well, that was ration blocks from Alethea by Megan Tennant. We're actually gonna be running a special Alethea birthday promo for the next seven days. And you can use the promo code BIRTHDAY over on our website, cloudkittenmarket.com, and you can get 15% off your order of a signed copy of Alethea. We have hard covers, soft covers, and cosmetic defect copies, which are a lot cheaper, and basically just the cover's a little off-center and funky. It, it's a perfectly fine perfectly book. There's fine. just a little bit of white at the bottom, and we didn't want to charge full price for them. Tell your friends, tell your family, go buy the book. Go buy the book. It's amazing. And make these ration blocks. <laughs> and if you make them, make sure to send us photos on Twitter, because we would love to see that. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and give it a share. Subscribe, and if you're already subscribed, make sure to ring that bell. Bye, Alethea, because it's amazing. <laughs> you, you need to do your Megan out outro. I'm not doing that, are you crazy? Do it with the orange. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, we will see you in the next one. Megan out? Out! <laughs>